Hi, I'm Ezekiel Dasho, and today I'm going to draw this great white shark, and it should be a fun little exercise. Um, so, so the first thing we can do is uh, decide, you know, basically what size we want to make, what we want to make it, and kind of just generally define where the tops and bottoms of the pictures are and the sides. So the the topmost point I see is the fin and it's kind of where I want the uh, I'd say I don't know a little bit to the left of the center of the picture for me so I want it pretty close to the top because it is the top of the point in the picture and so that would be like this point here and um, just continuing on from that point we can start to Um, extract the dimensions from the rest of the picture. So if we have the fin at about this size, that gives us a way to sort of start measuring the sizes of all of the other lines in relation to it. Um, so this curve here, I'm going to look at the angle of the fin here and the fin here and get the curve to match and create that angle with those two parts of the triangle. And keeps curving up and it, it sort of starts to become like the top of his head at around, like if you draw a line over, this almost creates an imaginary triangle. And that's about where it starts to curve back down ever so slightly into his face and nose or her, I'm not sure. And there's a little bit of a um, a con, concave aspect to this curvature here. It's not quite a straight line. So there we've got the top of the shark kind of sketched in we can going keep pushing forward from this point um, draw the curve here that makes up the side of his face and just for general reference put in a little bit of shadowing there This line then turns, kind of curves into his mouth, and we want to be sensitive to the shape of his head here. This should form a, you know, you don't want these lines too close together, and you don't want them too far apart. And I guess the best way to gauge that is kind of, um, you can almost draw like a line from the point of the fin to the to the tip of the mouth, an imaginary line. And you see like what angle that should be at and those should kind of line up similarly to the picture and that should that should be a good point of triangulation for that so then he's got his mouth and then this here forms like a little bit of an arch like that and it gets darker a little harder to see and one of the reasons I chose this picture is because of the nice curvature in the body. It's not just like a side shot of him. So we'll go back up to the top and start getting in some of that curvature here. Just dropping this line or this curve, just nice, easy, smooth curve um, down a little bit. And let's start in with some of these fins just to kind of get our reference points going. So this would be the back fin. It's almost immediately under the front of his top, or excuse me, gill, I guess. I, I'm just terrible with uh, animal anatomy. Um, let's see. So his, he's got one, two, three, four, five of these guys. Shark experts probably know that, but I'm no shark expert. <laughs> um, 
or I'll definitely learn a little something about them by drawing this one today. So just roughly getting in the, the general locations of those. So uh, I'm going to use the mouth as a point of triangulation again. It, if you see this, there's this, draw this imaginary curve. It almost runs parallel with the curve of his back. And that leads almost directly into the, to the uh, joint of his uh, front right fin, which would be on our left. But uh, So this, this fin makes this really this gorgeous curve line. And let's just look at that for a minute. It's, I mean, that's the kind of thing that like race car drivers and airplane engineers just should uh, study to make their stuff because it looks awesome and works really well. <laughs> um, let's see. So this fin... The, the back of it kind of does this, and there's a little bit of notching here, as you can see. And then it gets into this pretty sharp point. And that's quite a far distance from his body. So let's see if I've got this. I could almost drop this down even more, just extend that a little bit. And kind of sharpen up the curve of his body here because right above the back corner of his fin his his back starts to turn more and this you can see starts to drop in at a, sh a sharper angle so what i'm doing here is i'm kind of paying attention to the distance between the fin and the body and sort of trying to keep that shape that the negative space makes uh, keep that shape the same as well as, you know, pay attention to the, the lines and stuff. So this, this fin here is sort of a, I don't know, like a, what kind of angles those would be, but it's definitely like a triangular shape and a little bit irregular, not quite isosceles. So let's keep going with the curve here. This part of the back is almost, I mean, if you look at it, it's almost a like, like a drawn bow. It's just so elegantly curved. There is a little bit here, sort of, let's look at where that is. Dropping a vertical line down from the beginning of his spin, you can see where it starts to break right there. And by break i mean that's where the the curve starts to turn at a little bit different of an angle right about there and so it just for a short more distance and then that gives us the point in this curve here where his tail starts and we can just keep going from here using this sort of self-referential method where we triangulate everything and drop the uh, the tail down let's that, what is this length here that's something that you know I'm just kind of eyeballing it but I need to sort of explain it for new people how to how to extract that length while you're looking at the picture um, so looking at the picture you you know you'd say okay how do I know exactly how long to, to draw this line here um, well you I think the best way would be to find something nearby in the picture that you can compare it to to reference itself so on your picture it might be a little different than on mine and that's fine just reference it to something within your own art and then uh, sort of glean the measurement from that so i would say that you know it's very similar to this the length of this arc but just at a little bit different of a uh, curve um, so that would want be one way just to kind of eyeball it and get a quick, quick look at it. Um, it would be also maybe very similar to, oh, I don't know. It, it, it's maybe very similar to the length of this back of his fin. So that might be another way too. There might be, you might have approached this drawing from a different sort of direction and that's 
fine. And then you you know, if you're having issues with triangulating or uh, gleaning distances or anything like that, that referencing self-referential stuff like that will definitely help you get through those spots where you're not quite sure how to, how long to make a line or how to cut an angle. Um, you know, and a lot of, I mean, a lot of what drawing, like realism and drawing is, is just seeing the angles and being able to like pick them out and triangulate them and just do the work of seeing them. And, you know, that's why I think anybody can go from drawing stick figures to drawing in realism is just maybe they need help with someone sh showing them how to see the angles or how to um, define their lines and how to hold their pencil and stuff. But like I mean, really, really anybody can draw. And if anybody thinks they can't draw, I mean, they're wrong. It's just they haven't tried or they haven't had somebody help like show them how it's just a it's just a thing of checking the angles and and practicing a little bit but a lot of it just has to do with how you triangulate the angles and stuff and if you know if you if you don't get it right it's not because you're bad at drawing or anything like that it's just because you know there's an angle that you were incorrect about or that you could check better or whatever and that's why we do all these um, to practice is and for fun. Let's face it, it's really fun. <laughs> um, so let's see. On and on enough about my anyone can draw a speech. Um, we'll keep going with this shark here. A little bit more of my anyone can draw a speech. You're never too old to start drawing. You could be 70, 85, 90, 100 years old. If you can hold a pencil if you can hold, you know, a, a drawing utensil, you can also, you're never too young to start, but kids, kids are born drawing. They know, they know how to, let's see. Okay. So the tail, the top, the top length, it, it's a little, uh, arcing back and in, away into the distance a little bit. Um, and this shape here kind of does this almost forms this bow and kind of has a sharper point. So let's just kind of get this general shape in there and we can elongate it a little bit if need be. Um, so there's next, his fin here. Um, let's see, look at his right front, the fin that's closest to us. And then imagine this line here that leads to this point here there, that's an, that's one way to maybe grab that that point of where to start another way would be looking at this negative space shape and it kind of this blue the ocean sort of forms almost it looks like an arrow or something like if you look at the space between the fins that might be another way um another way is you know that you want this distance here to just be slight. So you could, using, you know, any number of ways, you could triangulate it saying, I'm going to draw, you know, an imaginary line straight up and down. And it, it basically hits the tip of this front gill or whatever you call it. And yeah, that, that's actually a pretty easy one to do. So that's basically about exactly vertical and straight up from that. So that just referencing it within your picture, maybe looking at it a couple different ways to have one or two, maybe three points of um, reference. And when you cross-reference those points, that's kind of triangulating it. And once you check the information against other information, that'll help you, the visual information. That will help you get the the look that you want. This could come forward just a little bit and arc down a little bit more. And this arc could be a little more. And then if you 
you look closely, there's a little bit of a like an angle here where it doesn't go straight into a point. It kind of angles. And handy dandy for me, the tip of his fin has a little bit of black or something so that the line there actually does need to be a little thicker. <laughs> so that can help cover up. Uh... But that's why we, we go in lightly with first. And I'm, I think I'm using a 2B. Yeah, I'm using a 2B pencil right now. And um, I'm just pressing very, very lightly. And now we can start getting into some of the shading and placing his eye, getting the teeth in there, getting the nose. Um, and this part starts to go pretty fast. And I'm not going to go for super hyper realism here. Just want to basically get the form in and then get it started to shading. Um, so we've got this fin up here that's pretty light gray with this little the area that's a little darker. Uh, let's go ahead and start kind of delineating the gray on top from the white on the bottom. And it kind of has this choppy sort of tear look to it. Kind of shredded, you know, look. Uh, really cool looking <laughs> um, and then let's see he's got this sort of almost a smiley looking thing and this nose is about there this is quite a bit darker on this side And so from his nose, there's also this like nostril kind of indentation thing. And then his eye is not quite a perfect circle. Well, it's not a perfect circle, but it's close to close to a circle. And it's there are little areas where it's like on the bottom right it's a little bit straight and pointed and just a little bit irregular a little bit like an oval that's very close to a circle and then close to his eye he's got this kind of area that's a little bit darker than the rest and so giving that a little bit of shading will help communicate that So one thing that I'm trying to do is um, when I'm when I'm shading this in, I uh, trying to go with the grain, go with the the plane rather, not the grain, but go with the plane that I'm working on. So like this top plane here is kind of just going in this direction. And then this plane here right by his eye, it's it's smaller, but it's going in a different direction. And then this one here, there's like cartilage or muscles around his face and mouth that are kind of defining their own little shadows in those places. So let's see, we keep moving on and find the spots in the gills at the tops. You see those spots that are kind of catching more darkness there aren't really getting hit by the lighting. And uh, so just kind of accentuating those spots a little bit to help uh, define them. And so on this back, I've seen a, maybe two planes kind of like this one here to the top and then this one here. And they're, they're very similar in directional, almost arcing and kind of this shadow seems like it's sort of being uh, cast by where his spinal column meets his uh, like rib cage or whatever. Like I said, I'm no shark anatomy expert. 
there are spots on the shark that are quite a bit lighter and I just kind of want to be respectful of those as I go and not just draw right over them or anything. Um, so the, the um, under side of the shark is much darker. And so that can start to get quite a bit more shading and again kind of keeping the shapes of these shadows in mind and noticing like here underneath is a little bit of a like a lighting ref reflected or some wraparound or bounce lighting I'm not exactly sure um, but that way it's not too uniform and you know you're sticking with what you see in the in your source material and draw a super light line on the edge here and and I'm gonna darken the fin up here. I was just looking for these points of contrast and kind of accentuating them a little bit uh, on the drawing because they're fine on the picture but when you get a black and white drawing you need some need some points of uh, contrast to keep it interesting and visually you know make keep it the viewer and the eye attracted to it as if it's all flat that'll your eye will just kind of you know like treat it like it's uh, flavorless or lukewarm definitely darker here um, okay so let's get up in here and make some teeth happen I'm not gonna draw the teeth I'm just gonna like seek out the shadows between the teeth and darken those areas so that you get the suggestion on the teeth but if I go in there with the pencil and try to like draw each tooth it's not going to look great unless you have a really big piece of paper and you've got this photograph blown up really big um, I don't recommend it I think uh, for you know for the size that I'm working in and the I've got a two millimeter pencil here which is pretty thick um, I, I just I, I don't think I get the kind of precision detail in me unless I bust out a super fine pencil sharpener and even then it's a more you're going to get I think a better look by drawing the shadows rather than by drawing the teeth themselves so at this point we are pretty much on our way to having a decent looking shark and I just want to grab some of these places that need more shadow and and hit them a little bit more it's, I'm using this sort of circular motion right now um, so that I can try to keep everything looking smooth because um, the sharks are definitely smooth looking and then there's a little bit of more shadow from this fin And underneath there's some sort of like birthmark or discoloration or something. I, I don't know. I'm not, it might be a anatomical feature. I'm not quite sure. I think I might just leave that out because if I try to draw it and I don't understand what it is, I, I think it's going to look like I have no idea what it is. And I don't know. I mean, I just, it could, it just looks like a big, 
birthmark or something like that. Scar or something. shadow comes a little bit farther out this way. The dark part of the shadow goes like that. So for the top part of the shark, you can kind of approach it with a little bit different um, different method than the bottom. The bottom is very smooth and it, it's, there's not a lot of light hitting it. And um, so you can kind of treat it one way. Uh, the top, um, there is a lot of light hitting it and it is relatively smooth, but the lights, there's also the shadow lighting from like the ripples in the ocean kind of. Um, so there, there is a lot of like variation to the lighting and it would not, I think, be a wise idea to go in there and treat it like the bottom. Otherwise, it'll start just looking the exact same. Um, let's start this tail. I'm not going to spend too much time on it here. I want the tail to look a little bit farther away so I think that uh, keeping it softer and a little less defined is a way to do that as well as making it a little bit making it a little bit less uh, oh definite than the And there, there's these textured bits and stuff like that. You can kind of get into it just to keep it looking interesting. And he, I want this area here to be much darker than the area next to it. So I'm going to go in there and get that shadow. darkened up a little bit. This comes across all the way over there. I almost want to just leave the top of the white the top of the fin white it'll look like it's catching a lot more light um, So this area here, definitely, I'm just, I'm just darkening it up to to the value level that I want it at. And so, you know, whether that takes cross hatching or whether it takes little circles or whether it, you know, it's just random. Um, I don't want to push too hard, but at the same time, I do want to get that area to be the darker, darkest probably area on the picture right here. And 
And let's shade this a little bit. And let's go ahead and give this a little more. And at this point, we're really just looking where where it looks to you, you know, just plain gray, or, and finding those places where we can, you know, where we haven't added enough darkness yet. And the, the photograph tells me, well, there's this dark ridge on the top of this fin. And it also tells me that this fin is much darker than this area here. So I need to, you know, give a, just a hit of gray to that area. And maybe another. Now that I've done four layers of cross hatching there, I think I can go in with the the circles a little bit and um, find the places where I can kind of see a little bit of variation in the darkness, like right here. It's a little darker than the spot next to it. Um, right here would be a little maybe darker, and then at the end of the fin, this like nice little area here which i'm almost drawing on you know old school like pressing down like i'm writing almost just to get that um, shape properly defined and then the bottom of the fin does have this sort of dark edge and it also his fin is a little frayed and ragged. And since that is black, I'm going to go ahead and choose those places and draw that in there. It's like some detailing. And then similar that you could put a little detailing like here. And we're getting pretty close. Got these areas up here that are pretty soft and light and there are lots of planes to look at up here you could definitely give that a lot more time um, this is sort of darker right here and this i want to keep this sort of raggedy like shark look look to that And let's darken up the eye a little more because it's similar to the other places that we just detailed like that is black. Um, all right, well, before I go, I think I'm just gonna take one more pass at the underbelly and kind of get a little more shading in there and then We'll call it a piece. Be dark in this area here a little bit. And same, not pressing down very hard, just getting some darkness just swiping at it to kind of get the uh, the darkness there and then this still needs more over here to just make it contrast with this part here and then that could use a little bit of definition but
Okay. That, uh, that concludes this <laughs> drawing of a shark. And if uh, you stayed with me the whole time, thank you. And I hope to see you again for more uh, drawing videos in the near future. And uh, yeah, uh, this has been Easy Kill Dasho. And see you next time.